Hello, I'm Dr. Jung Young Eun. This is the case discussion to share clinical difficulties and find the optimal solutions. We have three clinical masters. Hello. A real-time chatting channel is open from the last case discussion. It can be used by the then all viewers. The chatting window is at the right hand side of the video screen. Have you seen it? Yes. It's something similar to what I saw on TV. If the chatting channel is actively used, the viewers can send us uh, questions and we can share our comments. I hope the chatting channel would be used actively. On the dental site, viewers can ask questions or share comments using the chatting window. Let's look at the case presented to us. The patient is 71-year-old male, no specific disease. The chief complaint is mobile lower anteriors and pain in the gum. Should I treat it with a bridge or implants? If implants, do I need to place two? So that's the question we received. If you look at the panorama, there's a three unit bridge over 41, 31, and 32 in the mandible. Roots are shortened and the bone is resorbed, so it can be mobile. If you look at the clinical pictures, the bridge is cut between number 31 and pontic. Number 32 and pontic are removed. The lower anterior has narrow bones, so we need to be careful what procedures we will employ and how many implants need to be placed. What do you think? I'm a little bit puzzled because lower anterior is the last area that goes into trouble. Here, everywhere else is okay, but the lower anterior. I'll discuss this with my cases later. As I see it, is it number 41? I think the questioner dentist tries to save number 41 by cutting the bridge off and the treat the two extracted areas. It looks very challenging. If it were me, I would extract number 41 as well. I am in the surgery department and if I get the request to work on this, from the prosthodontic department, I would go back to them. I would suggest a bridge for that case because the surgery would be very challenging. Lower anterior is the region where calculus is found the most, as it is periodontally most vulnerable. And the bone is very poor, so I would recommend a bridge. I will talk about this with my case later where I used implant placement there. I would like to ask the viewers to think about this case. If you have a good idea in terms of the treatment plan, I'll please share that on the chatting window in real time. I would like to know how you treat similar cases. Dr. Kim kyung won please. I try to find a similar case. This patient came to me in 2011 in the mid 40s. Now he is in the 50s. At the beginning, there were no teeth in the posterior regions in the maxilla. Overall, teeth in the mandible were not very good, including the anterior and posterior, because the patient did not control diabetes. So I told the patient he actually came for implants. I told him to control the diabetes, otherwise it is not possible to place the implants. And as we started the surgery, he came to control diabetes. Now the patient received the implants throughout the mouth. At the beginning, 
he wanted the implants in the posterior regions of maxilla. The canine was extracted and implant is placed. The labia wall of the canine is all destroyed. Sinus graft was done. This is not related to the case under discussion. The labial is destroyed in the canine. If you look at CT or images carefully, uh, there was a septum in the right sinus. So septum and the lateral wall was uh, taken and used in GBR, and fibrin glue is also used here. So the posterior of maxilla was treated first, and then the patient complained about the lower anterior, and Dr. Kim said that uh, he would recommend a bridge, but this patient had diabetes, so four were extracted. As you can see, there is a lot of calculus. After the extraction, it looks clean. MS type 1 body implants were used. Pathfinding is very difficult with MS. I don't do the prosthesis, so oh, I need to pay attention when I place implants because the prosthodontist would have difficulties after my surgery. Therefore, the path was found. MS implants were placed in the lower anterior. A temporary was delivered to the patient. Actually, he used the temporary for a long time for economic reasons, and the final prosthesis was delivered quite late. On the other side, I used the last kit to do the sinus graft. After that, in March 2012, SS implants were placed in the mandible. If you look at the fourth panorama, the MS implants in the lower anterior, post up three years and two months, the patient controlled the diabetes and uh, used the implants pretty well. At the beginning, I told him as long as the diabetes is not brought under control, implants cannot be placed, but he control the diabetes and it worked pretty well. I couldn't do all the treatment for the whole mouth at the same time for the patient's economic reasons. He came from time to time to get treated one step at a time. You can see post-op seven years. Patient didn't want to lose his teeth, so from time to time I extracted one or two at a time. If you look at the case under discussion, is it right to keep number 41? If it were me, I would extract that. Extracting number 42 would be good, but at least I need to extract number 41 in three missing teeth area. Two implants need to be placed. Dr. Kim? I have a question. One body implants, I don't use it really. Is it okay, aesthetically, if you use one body implants? The emergence profile is not favorable. I cannot use it for prosthesis, so is it okay in terms of the design? Ostom has various implant families and other companies have similar implants. In terms of the design, I was really impressed by the design of this implant. I believe Dr. Yi Kwang Won consulted on the design. I thought the design is really wonderful. For anterior in the mandible, if you look at one body implants in other companies, they are similar to MS. I really love MS. That's superb for four anteriors in the mandible. And you talked about peri-implantitis. The prosthesis can be controlled prosthetically. If you place them properly, it's really good. People seem to have difficulty in the placement of it because when they are placed together, they are all loaded immediately. 
later I will explain with my case. I heard that you don't like the cement type. <laughs> In the lower anterior, there is no other option. Let me show you my case. So this is the diagram I use in the lectures. I like internal conical type OSTEM TS implants. It is used throughout the mouth in the posterior regions where a lot of loading is applied. SS implant is recommended in the mandible. I use MS specifically. I recommend the 2.5 by 13 millimeters, diameter 2.5 millimeters and length 13. It is for the lower anteriors. When four anteriors are missing, some people prefer 4.0 or 3.5 because we can do the placement and the prosthesis separately. If we place four, the distance between the implants is too small and buccolingually bone is not enough. So when one is missing, I place one implant. When two are missing, I place one implant with cantilever or place two. Cantilever is not a desired prosthesis in the lower anterior. Placing one implant with one cantilever is okay. Like this, one. So when two are missing, one or two implants can be placed. If three are missing, two are placed and the pontic in the middle. If four are missing, two are placed and two pontic, four unit bridge. In this case, number 31 and 41 were problematic, we can extract number 31 only. Four anteriors can be considered as one unit. Here 32 and 42 were okay. So two were extracted. One implant was placed with a guide where the bone is abundant. When you place an implant manually, it is difficult to place it imagining the prosthesis, but we have the guided surgery kit, one MS. We can control the positioning pretty well. On MS implant, it can be placed with a couple of drills. So if you make a mistake in the first drilling, you cannot pr proceed. We designed with a guide and it is confirmed. One MS guide kit is used for the placement. Here, the condition was favorable, buccolingually. It is placed at the center. Manually, it cannot be placed like that. 2.5 by 13. I don't use a 3.0 because 2.5 is good enough. I have a question. We have 11.5. Why did you choose 13? I think the longer one is better. There's cortical bone in the mandible. Some people prefer 11.5, but I like long one. I like short ones in other places, but uh, in the mandible anterior, mechanical strength is important because it's immediately loaded. I waited for two months. Impression was taken and the prosthesis with the cantilever. In this case, uh, there was enough space. Placing two can be desirable, but MS implant can be trusted. So it is being used pretty well. Case two, two were placed. Number 31 and 41 missing. Guided surgery is prepared. Two, placing two in small space can be dangerous. As Dr. Kim talked about peri-implantitis, to have appropriate distance between them, guided surgery is required. We cannot place this precisely manually. Impression is taken. Buccolingually, it is exactly at the center. So skilled surgeon cannot 
place like this, only guided surgery can do this. In the anterior mandible, for example, if 32 and 42 are damaged, that can be a headache. Therefore, we need to select the implants. I believe MS implants are the answer for four interiors. For four interiors, two 3.5 or two 3.0 can be placed for a bridge. Personally, I think MS is the best. Going back to the case under discussion, number 41 should be extracted without even thinking, as you said. Number 31 should be extracted. I think the dentist wanted to save it, so he cut the bridge. But uh, aggressively, we need to extract it and the prosthesis. For example, if you do not want implants, I worked for an academy of aesthetic dentistry before. I saw there this case, someone reduced the natural teeth very skillfully and did the prosthesis over them. Very impressive. I majored in prosthodontics, but I hate to reduce natural tooth. I don't want to see the tooth I reduced gets destroyed. My choice is implants. Aggressively, this is extracted. I don't reduce the tooth, so two MS implants are placed. That is the answer to this question. Dr. Kim Yun tae my idea is totally different to the idea of a prosthodontist. You said you don't want to see the destruction of the tooth you reduce, and I don't want to see the destruction of the tooth I placed. The, we have so many low anterior cases. I try to avoid the treatment there. You said MS is the answer. I used one body implants in the past but uh, the outcome was not very good, so I don't use it that much. I plan to use it in the future. Let's have a look at the anatomy of a mandible the anterior region. It's very thin. It is composed of cortical bone. If you look at the hole, inside the hole, a lot of the portion is cortical bone. Also, integration cannot occur from the cortical bone. This can be resorbed and this can be easily destroyed by the physical force. And the calculus is found the most here, so this is the most unfavorable place to place an implant. I tell the residents that mandibular anterior is the most challenging area to treat in terms of the process to success. So, here is the anatomy. The second one, pear shape, is most frequent. I believe you experience all of them. The hourglass is most frustrating. The top portion looks broad, but the middle part is narrow. It looks like knife edge, so we need to form a bone. I have to do implant placement in the mandibular anterior region that was diagnosed as hopeless. Number 33 is saved by cutting the bridge, 31. So three remained. It has been edentulous for a long time, therefore the bridge is very thin, 32. If you open the gingiva, you can see the ridge is very thin. Cortical bone is primarily at the top. We need to go deep down the site to get the osseo integration. We do a lot of GBR today. At that time, we did a lot of ridge splitting. There is a disadvantage associated with it, so I don't recommend it, but I use the microsaw. It is a split and spread so that implants can be in the bone housing. You cannot open wide the split ridge because 
it may damage the adjacent teeth. You need to be careful to place implants. I drilled further rather than MS. 3.0, the thin normal implants are used. The stability can be gained from below from basal bone and also from the ridge that is split. The bone is deficient, so GBR is done. I believe alloplastic such as biphasic calcium phosphate is pretty good to maintain space here. According to biopsy, they make bone pretty well. Xenograft or biphasic calcium phosphate needs to be used to form bone here, and membrane needs to be used as well. Rich split is not the highlight. It's part of GBR. It was done to put implants in the bone housing to facilitate osseointegration. Sutured, post-op picture, time passed. If it is not exposed during the healing period, it goes pretty well. So you can see the volume is established. The membrane still exists. After five months, it is removed. So I could see it remains. This is five months later and still the bone formation goes on even after six months or one year. Healing abutment, prosthesis. This is before and after. Final prosthesis. Another disadvantage of lower anterior is the aesthetics because of the size and the bone cannot be augmented vertically well, there's a limitation. It is a split, but uh, it is horizontally augmented and not vertically. The disadvantage of the lower anterior is the bone cannot be formed easily, so I try to avoid treating that area. Professor? At four anterior region, there's hardly any interdental space. Two body implants are used. At number two and number three, it's burdensome to place implanted there. So uh, prosthesis tend to be like this. Periodontally, it is not easy to control the area. I make patient use dental floss. It would be difficult for a dentist with a private practice, but uh, we recall the patient to come back every three or four months in our hospital to receive the calculus control. What you said is correct. I need to complain about this to prosthodontist. This is something a prosthodontist cannot resolve because there is a limitation in the surgery. I think a breach is the answer to lower anterior. One more special case, lower anterior. It's not my case. The patient is very young, in the 30s. Post-discharge is the chief complaint. As I said before, the osseointegration doesn't occur very well, so the buccal bone tends to get resorbed. Buccal graft can be done, or we can just pass it as it is in the bone, at least. On the left, a typical dehiscence defect. On the right, the fenestration occurs. So the patient came like this. I opened it. Lower anterior is composed of a cortical bone, so GBR is challenging. And it is not really a housing bone. So to resolve it, surface decontamination was done. I really had the commitment to treat this patient. Laser treatment scaling followed by laser treatment and local antibiotics to treat the peri-implantitis. There is a merit in the lower anterior. Uh, we can 
access the area so we can do the decontamination of the surface with confidence so the surface is made very clean and I thought about bone graft but due to various reasons I tried the soft tissue graft which is not a common practice here implant surface can be exposed in many cases not all of them create problems as long as infection is controlled if it is lingual there's a lot of uh, calculus so it will be more challenging but this is a vocal problem after treatment grafting after stitch out we can expect the gingiva creep up one month later inflammation disappeared and the patient was satisfied and scaling has been done at 30 months yet the gingiva crept up yes i was very happy so the picture was taken by a resident i don't like the angle of the picture though so we can prepare for such problems so this shows how the problem can be resolved one more thing the space is very narrow for three anteriors as was the case of Dr. Kim gi -sung. number 41 and 42 were problematic so two would be extracted to place implants MS can be placed immediately but I don't use it on the x-ray 42 is completely destroyed and 41 the bone is low therefore it is extracted I placed one you can see deficient bones so GBR was done I cannot just go deep so the height was compromised and GBR was done care for membrane was available at that time nine months after the first surgery prosthesis cantilever is a good idea for the mandibular anterior considering the cantilever I chose a thicker implant about the 4.0 normally I would use 3.2 it required more GBR because of the use of cantilever so that is the limitations coming back to the case under discussion if I place implants there I would extract 41 so two would be placed and the three unit breach would be made one step further I would persuade the prosthodontist to deliver a bridge that's a good idea and there's no difference in the cost between the implant and the bridge as the implants are covered by the national health insurance I don't think implants are bad I tend to do GBR without splinting the ridge but we need to challenge the case knowing the limitations we need to consider various options but uh, as far as the mandible anterior is concerned we need to be careful to increase the success rate may I ask a question when you split the ridge there should be some width of the ridge right in the mandible anterior are you talking about the pontic no for the ridge splitting you're talking about the ridge splitting if the bone the ridge is very thin I use number 15 blade to make an incision and uh, later I use a micro blade the crest bone would be resorbed two millimeter or less bone will be resorbed so I did the GBR which is splitting is not the end it's part of GBR the micro saw is dangerous it can bounce so it can damage your lips if you have the piezo 
it can be a good option for rich splitting. Piezo can be successful and it's not very difficult to use. You talked about the rich splitting. Personally, I believe many people in the audience watch this, but I want to tell you that you need to gain experience before you try the rich splitting. That is the last result. That's what I used to say in a lecture. I work at a university hospital, so I saw many cases where patients come to us with a destroyed host bone from the rich splitting. I can see a lot of dentists with a private practice attempt rich splitting. You need to be careful in doing the rich splitting. Micro saw is dangerous. It can bounce. And uh, Dr. Kim talked about very important thing. Uh, many dentists do, do rich splitting without GBR on top of it. If you just show the rich splitting you don't tend to show the long-term follow-up. What I believe is that when you do the rich splitting, it should be covered with the bone grafting. It should be done together with GBR. If someone thinks, I want to do the rich splitting, looking at Professor Kim's case, what I want to say is that you need to be very careful with rich splitting and you need to do bone grafting over the split ridge, otherwise the bone will be resorbed. I was um, impressed by Professor Kim's gingiva graft. When threads are exposed in the lower anterior, even though you do bone graft there, it doesn't work. In many cases, detoxification is very important, still it's challenging. In the past, I used to think treating a lower anterior was easy, but today, I don't think so. Maxillary sinus is even easier than that. I saw Dr. Kim Gil-sung's case. Recently, I used MS 2.5. The length I choose is 11.5. As Dr. Kim said, the 4 millimeter neck should be used to place it deep. So that's what I'm thinking these days. Regarding the depth, let me add, if you place an implant deeper, some people think that's not good because the length of prosthesis would get long and uh, it means deeper pocket, susceptible to peri-implantitis. According to the outcome of research, it is not the case. If it is long, it is not just normal pocket. You can buy time until peri-implantitis. So if it is longer, less peri-implantitis. Up to 4 millimeters, the protective function is better. If it is longer than that, uh, prosthetic complications can occur. The 4 millimeters seems to be right. Most periodontists that I know don't like the deep placement because of the pocket. But uh, according to review of papers, this is just a couple of papers that we may need to wait and watch, but recent trend is deep placement. The longer the abutment, the less problem. Upper posteriors, the gingiva is very thin, but problems happen their first periimplantitis. We shouldn't be scared of placing deep into gingiva. Prosthetically, it's more favorable as well. Case discussion, we talked about the treatment of mandibular anterior region. I believe this has answered some of the questions that you have. Thank you very much for the good advices. I would like to thank three doctors, masters. This concludes the case discussion. I am Dr. Chung Young On. I'll come back next time. Thank you. Thank you.